What's up everybody, this is Kenny here from Profit Stories. So it's another few more days to the end of the year, right? And everybody's doing their 2020 recap. I thought that I wouldn't want to miss the bandwagon. So here's my 2020 recap. After being a year in real estate industry, five things I've learned. Before I move on, if you have not subscribed, do consider hitting the subscribe button. Oh no, just hit the subscribe button. And also smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so that more people can find this video even especially if they are considering to go into self-employed or already in self-employed but don't know what to do at this moment they I hope they can learn from this video before I move to the five things I think I would like to share what 2020 our, my original plans for 2020 is you see I quit, quit my job last year right August 2019 so I went full on to real estate I thought that perhaps I need a break after three months or four months. It's not maybe what not what I want to do. So in 2020, I was planning to take a gap year. What I mean by gap year, I always wanted to travel, travel, make vlogs. I want to buy a new camera, a new laptop, so I will travel, edit vlogs at at night and upload on YouTube. That is my original plan. And what if the money is finished? Come back and wait tables. Yes. I'm willing to come back and wait tables at a cafe or something or at Starbucks or something or make work at 7-Eleven that I'm willing to do all that just for one year and see how it feels like and maybe find something to do after that this is something I wanted to do in my 20s but I have no I don't, I don't have the opportunity and uh, I'm not getting any younger so why not right 2020 and we all know what happened the moment the virus was found, COVID-19 was found in December in Wuhan. It went, came here, like spread like a wildfire. We had MCOs, we had all these uh, lockdowns, we had so many uncertainties. One day changed SOP a few times. We, we had all that, uh, right? This 2020, for lack of better word, is an unprecedented year. We will never see anything like this anymore, in, at least in our lifetime. <laughs> I hopefully yeah so I know I understand how you feel especially if you are in a position of loss like you are, maybe you have lost your job maybe you don't know what to do at this moment or maybe uh, your plans nothing has worked believe me my plans nothing has worked for this year and uh, and it's not there's not a day where I thought that damn I should actually get a job next year or damn, I should actually just give this up, it's so tough. I will come to the reasons why I choose not to quit later. But for now, let's dive in to the 5 things that I've learned being in real estate for the past 1 year. Number 1. Learn everything about your job. Number, what I mean by this? If I'm a real estate agent, I learn everything from lead generation, posting ads, right down to closing and also the boring part which is documentation. You need to know how to fill documents, how to claim your commissions, all this you need to learn. Yes, I hate documentation, suck at documentation, it's a, so, but I still need to learn. Because you know why? Because when if you know everything and that's what you're self-employed you're supposed to do, if you know everything, it makes you easier to lead a team next time. Next time you have a newbie, you can guide because you know the process A to Z. Or, or if you hire someone, if you're in your own business, working for yourself, you roughly know what's the job description and you know what type of people you want to get on board in your team. Nothing about the superficial, technical stuff and also, also feelings is very important, but you need to know technical things as well. That's the reason. Number two is to focus focus and focus what I mean by this uh, as a real estate agent you will be it is very tempting uh, because you can sell anything under the sun I mean it uh, anything anything that has a land and also is on land you can sell it you name it room under construction properties completed properties rental you can do anything so there's a lot of temptation here of Okay, I try this under construction properties. I do it once, I do it like maybe a month and say, oh, there's no result, cut off, and then move on to another one. Sub sales. 
Oh, that one cannot. And then you will get distracted by small, small monies. Uh, small, small things that come. Hey, Kenny, why don't you come here and collaborate with us? You rent out a parking. A parking uh, of 100 ringgit uh, a day. And we are very fast to rent out. You can get like 500 a day. You can rent out 5 parkings. All these small, small things, you know. Hey, you know, uh, this is... You don't look down on small money. If it's the... If... The room is 500 ringgit, you can rent out 10 rooms, it's 5,000. You see, these are all the small, small money if you do not focus. For someone who focuses only on room rental, they can earn definitely more than that. And that's no trick. That's no trick. The person that does only room rentals, I've heard and know of people who earn like 5 figures a month uh, in this MCO period just doing room rentals. That's all. I've also known people that doing rentals uh, rentals and collecting more than 5 figures a month 10 to 15,000 a month Or sale Sale My team has various examples of sales like in 6 digit figures 100 over 1000 a sale or 200,000 a month So the key here is focus There's no such thing as uh, spreading yourself too thin If you choose under construction, then it's under construction You have and which brings me to my third point. Give it some time. Things take time. You must be patient with it. Things take time. Huh? You have to focus and give it for full focus. Take care of it. Think of how to make it work for a certain period of time before you throw in the towel. How long? I don't know. I don't know. That is for you to find out. I can't advise you that side. Number four, make decisions fast and firm. What I mean by this, fast and firm. I used to stay in Tutarin Jaya, right? So when I first wanted to get this key for this property, I wanted to make my base in Wangsa Maju. So I wanted to do a subsale property there, at that area. It, you see, I've made that decision to come to Wangsa Maju. But what I didn't do is make my decision whether I want to rent it out or renovate it and, and stay myself. It took me like few months, three months. You may think it's a short time, huh? but ladies and gentlemen, I've been commuting from Petain Jaya to Wangsa Maju every single day, every single day for the three months, even Saturday, Sunday. For morning to night, uh, doing other people's work, other clients' work, except myself. So I have, I had learned that that is really costing me time and time and money. The more I procrastinate on this kind of crucial decision, the more it costs me money. So this money, I uh, in that three months, uh, I have saved a lot. If I just made a decision, okay, I'm moving to Wangsa Maju, and this is the renovation I need. That's it, done. Case closed. Okay. Number five. Number five is remove your self-limiting belief. Yes, easier said than done. Have anyone actually up, come up to you and say, oh, you're too young to lead a team. You, you just, nobody, no sales, nothing, nobody going to follow you. Hmm? Everyone that that, that, oh, you're just very new, huh? Oh, maybe I just give my keys to another agent. It happens, okay? It happens. So you, you, you go back and think, oh, so I'm new lah. Maybe there's no landlord lah who wants to actually give the key or wants to work with me. That's bullshit. That is pure bullshit. You see, self-employed, right? When you are self-employed, uh, the the you go to self from employee to self-employed to entrepreneur because of the limitless possibilities. There's nobody. The first person don't want to work with you is behind others. The first hundred people don't want to work with you, number hundred and one, no problem. So remove that self-limiting belief. Or maybe the first person that you have a partnership with, then you say, oh shit man, I shouldn't have a partnership, I should do at it alone. But it will hinder your growth, right? Because if you don't have a partnership and you know you need to work in a team. So you go and find a partner. Yes, yes, I'm not denying that they will sometimes bite you in the back. But that it is what it is, okay? It is what it is outside. Even in an employment world. There's no difference. Office politics bring to an out self-employed is even worse. 
sometimes you don't even know what hit you until it's too late. I got rental units uh, that's taken right under my nose. I got units that's taken also right under my nose that's sold. That I don't even have a chance to know who's the who's the person that sold it or who's the who's the agent that do it. Even if I know, so what? Right? So what? I can what I can do is just to say, okay, I don't want to cooperate with this agent anymore. That's all. I have to move on in my life. So remove that self-limiting belief of you are not enough. You are enough as you are. So you can do whatever you set yourself in. Whatever goals you set yourself to achieve. Okay? Your goals should grow with your capability and your confidence. If you cannot grow at the start like 500,000 or 100,000, even 100,000, it doesn't matter. Why not just aim to replace how much you used to earn last month? How much you used to earn in employment? Let's just say 5,000 a month or you even earn 10,000 a month. Do 4 rentals for 10,000 a month. Let's just target that 4. So one week, one week, that's it. But remove that limiting belief that you are not enough, that you are new so that you don't, de- so you don't deserve to be able to be good business out there like the pros, like the seasoned pros. And also, remove that self-limiting belief that people are bad. You are bound to meet some bad apples. I can assure you, uh, you are bound to meet some bad apples. But overall, in general, if you persevere, you will be able to find the partners that you can work with and all of you can go far together. So these are the five things that I've learned throughout one year in real estate. There's many more, but I think these are the five that is very, very crucial moving forward for 2021. I hope that it will help you. And if you are in this situation right now, in self-employed, you don't know what to do, you're confused, or you are thinking of going in self-employed next year, or you are thrust into most of us are out of desperation, loss of job, company closed down for whatever reason, retrench, you're thrust into self-employed. I wish you all the best, okay? I wish that you learn from all my mistakes and things that I did right, okay? So that you will shorten your learning curve and you won't be as spoonful as myself. So I'll see you again in the next video. Until then, Happy New Year and this is Kenny here from Property Stories. Bye-bye.